Pastor John Randall says there's hope no matter what you're going through today because Jesus is alive. Maybe today you've come to this parking lot and you're as far down as you have ever been. Perhaps you've suffered great loss in your life or you are overcome by grief or depression has taken hold of your heart. Maybe some addiction has bound you or you're suffering the consequences of poor decisions that you've made. And maybe things have gotten so bad that you've even had thoughts of ending it all. Listen to me. You need to know that Jesus is alive. The Bible says that the Lord is near to the brokenhearted and he sees you. Welcome to a very special edition of A Daily Walk. We'll be joined by Pastor John Randall in a moment. Well, this weekend, Christians all over the world are recalling the great sacrifice Jesus made for us on the cross. And the good news is that he's alive. But what does this great truth mean for your life today? More than you may realize, because the tomb is empty, your life no longer needs to be empty. You can experience joy, fulfillment, and life everlasting. Here's Pastor John with the good news of Easter. You know, I have some amazing news for you this morning, and that is this. It's Resurrection Sunday morning, and the tomb where Jesus was buried is empty. He is risen from the dead. He is alive and well. I was just in Israel only a few weeks back, and I'm pleased to report having visited the tomb again. Still empty. It's great news. But folks, listen, we're not, we're not gathered, gathered here this, this morning, morning to, to commemorate, commemorate a, a dead religion founded by a dead leader. Instead, we're here to remember our resurrected Savior and King, Jesus. And I want to read to you this morning from a portion of Scripture out of the New Testament in the Gospel according to Matthew in chapter 28. And it reads this way. But the angel answered and said to the woman, Do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen, as he said. But come. See the place where the Lord lay and go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. And indeed, he is going before you into Galilee and there you will see him. Behold, I have told you. And so they went out quickly from the tomb with fear and great joy and ran to bring his disciples word. The resurrection of Jesus Christ is the very foundation of Christianity in which every biblical doctrine must be established. It's also the greatest sign given to the world of the power of God. For the resurrection of Jesus sets him apart from every other person that has come and gone claiming to be a spiritual leader. At this very moment, the decaying remains of Buddha can be visited at the foot of the Himalayan mountains. The remains of Muhammad are buried in Medina, Saudi Arabia. Charles Darwin is buried at the Westminster Abbey in London. But the grave of Jesus was emptied 2,000 years ago and remains empty to this day. He alone has conquered the grave. And although the resurrection took place over 2,000 years ago, it has changed the course of history. Without the resurrection, the Bible would have no power or real significance. Established churches and their weekly services would be pointless if there was no resurrection. But as you examine the evidence for the resurrection, you come to realize that it can be pronounced as the best established fact of history. But the most important part of the resurrection of Jesus is not only how it has affected history, but how it can affect your eternal destiny. And before this service comes to a close, I'm going to give you the opportunity to come and stand below this platform and pray to receive Jesus Christ as your Savior, to have your sins forgiven, to have the promise of eternal life in heaven. This morning, we can look back with complete confidence and absolute certainty knowing that Jesus is alive. But on that first resurrection Sunday, the disciples were in a much different place than we are now. Although the disciples had heard what Jesus said, they did not remember what Jesus said. 
On the day that Jesus was crucified, a just and noble man named Joseph of Arimathea, along with the religious leader named Nicodemus, came and asked the Roman governor, Pontius Pilate, for the body of Jesus, in order that they might place it in a tomb. And being that Jesus died only three hours before the Sabbath, which began at sundown, they really didn't have much time to complete the burial process. They quickly wrapped the body of Jesus and placed him in a tomb that was carved out of a rock located in a garden near the place where he was crucified. Then they placed a large stone over the entrance. And behind that stone and within that tomb were all the hopes and the dreams of the disciples. At that moment, everything seemed lost. Without Jesus, life had lost its true meaning. The religious leaders who had falsely accused Jesus and had him put to death remembered Jesus' predictions about his resurrection. In fact, they were so concerned that the disciples of Jesus might attempt to steal the body and claim that he had risen from the dead. They sent temple guards to protect the tomb and sealed it with a Roman seal from potential grave robbers. The Bible also reveals that after the Sabbath day had ended, a group of women had prepared to visit the tomb, bringing spices and ointment to further anoint the body and complete the burial process. Yet as the women made their way to the grave site, they questioned among themselves, who will roll the stone away? What they didn't realize was that before they arrived, the Bible says that there had been an earthquake and that an angel of the Lord had descended from heaven and come and rolled back the stone from the door and and sat on it. And his countenance was like lightning and his clothing as white as snow. And the guards, it says, they shook for fear of him and became like dead men. In other words, all of the obstacles that they were concerned about had been removed before they arrived. The stone which stood in their way had been rolled away. The stone was removed, not so Jesus could get out, but in order that the world could look in and see that the grave was empty. Let me ask you this morning, what are the obstacles that stand in the way of you coming to Jesus Christ? What's currently holding you back from surrendering your will to God's will and following Jesus? Perhaps some of you have gone back to old habits, old practices of sin, and it keeps you from following Jesus. For others of you, maybe you just are too proud to follow Jesus. And your estimation in comparison to other people, you're put together. But it's only on the outside. On the inside, you're empty. In fact, the Bible makes it clear that there is a void in every heart of every person that can only be filled by God himself. No relationship, no pursuit, no pleasure can fill that vacancy. Only God can fill that void within your heart, and he can do it today. The Gospel of John records in the 20th chapter that a woman named Mary Magdalene, who was a faithful follower of Jesus went to the tomb early that morning. But when she arrived, she saw that the stone was rolled away and the tomb was empty. She assumed the body had been stolen. And so she quickly ran to tell the disciples. And when Peter and John received the news, they immediately ran to the gravesite to see for themselves. And the Bible says when Peter and John arrived at the tomb, that John looked inside, but Peter went inside. They then carefully inspected the linen grave grave clothes that were neatly folded where the body had been placed. And the fact that the tomb was in order indicated that the body had not been forcefully stolen. The Gospel of Luke points out for us in the 24th chapter that Peter did not understand what had happened, that he was confused. On the other hand, John believed that Jesus had risen from the dead. Peter and John then returned home, but Mary returned to the gravesite a second time. The Bible says that when Mary Magdalene returned, she broke down and she began to weep. She had been there at the foot of the cross and watched firsthand the cruelty of the death of Jesus and how he was brutally murdered right in front of her. It was more than she could bear. And to make matters worse, it appeared that the body had been taken. And life for Mary at that moment seemed so unfair. She was left with unanswered questions and confusion and all that she could do was cry. Have you ever had a day like that? When the world seemed like such a confusing and dark place? When nothing seemed to be right 
in the world and everything was hopeless and dark, maybe today you've come to this parking lot and you're as far down as you have ever been. Perhaps you've suffered great loss in your life or you are overcome by grief or depression has taken hold of your heart. Maybe some addiction has bound you or you're suffering the consequences of poor decisions that you've made. And maybe things have gotten so bad that you've even had thoughts of ending it all. Listen to me. You need to know that Jesus is alive. The Bible says that the Lord is near to the brokenhearted and he sees you. He knows your name and he loves you and he wants to turn your sorrow today into joy if you will allow him to. Jesus said in John 11, 25, I am the resurrection and the life. And he who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. Do you believe this? In the moment of Mary's deepest sorrow, Jesus was there. In one of the sweetest scenes in all of scripture, Mary was granted the honor of being the first person to see the risen Lord. Jesus spoke to Mary and he said, woman, why are you crying? Mary had been crying so much, she didn't even recognize that it was Jesus. She thought that he was the gardener. And then Jesus called her by name. And when Jesus called her by name, she realized that it was him. And when Mary saw Jesus, everything changed. Initially, she was hopeless and without direction, but seeing Jesus alive, she now had hope and purpose. I don't know what your condition is today, but I do know this, that all of us have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, that there is none righteous and that we all need a savior. And without Jesus as our savior, we'll never make it to heaven. Jesus claimed to be the way, the truth, and the life. And he said, no one comes to the father except through me. Jesus then instructed Mary, go and tell the other disciples that he was alive. And this was the first of five appearances that Jesus made on Resurrection Sunday. The Bible records that Jesus then appeared to another group of women. It says when the women saw Jesus alive, they fell down and they worshiped him. And he instructed them to also go and tell the disciples that he might meet them in Galilee. This was the second appearance on Resurrection Sunday. Then the Bible indicates at some point privately, Jesus appeared to Peter. Peter, who had denied the Lord three times when he had vowed that he was ready to die with him. Jesus, at some point, came to Peter privately and restored him. Peter had failed, and he needed to know that Jesus was alive and that he was forgiven. Folks, we have all failed. We have all sinned. That's why Jesus came. In recent days, maybe your life has been a consistent denial of the life of Jesus but that can all change if you'll turn back to him. You can be restored to fellowship with God once again. Later that evening, Jesus appeared to two disillusioned and very discouraged disciples who had left town. They were on the road to Emmaus, the Bible says. In Luke 24, a man by the name of Cleopas and another unnamed disciple were leaving Jerusalem. And why? Because they lost hope. They were simply walking away. They were going back to a life they used to know before they began to follow Jesus. You know, there are many people like that today. At one time, walking with Jesus. At one time, reading their Bible. At one time, serving the Lord. But basically, things didn't work out the way that they had hoped. Perhaps they were hurt by a church or they found some other pursuit. They got a new job or things went back to normal or they weren't as desperate for fellowship as they were before and they walked away. And often they use those very things to explain or justify why they're no longer following the Lord. Oh, you know about the cross, but you don't know yet the power of the resurrection. And as these two men were walking along the road discussing the details of the death of Jesus... In that moment, Jesus appeared to them on the road and began to speak with them. And he asked them, hey, what are you guys talking about? And they said, we got to tell you about this guy, Jesus. Haven't you heard? Don't you know? Jesus said, well, tell me, what happened to this Jesus? Can you imagine? And they began to inform him all the things that had happened to him. And he listened. 
And then at the very end, Jesus reproved the two disciples and he said, you are slow of heart to believe all that the scriptures had foretold concerning the suffering of the Messiah. And then beginning with Moses and the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. Later that evening, they sat down to a meal. And when Jesus broke bread in front of these two disciples, they recognized him and he disappeared. And this was their response after Jesus disappeared. They said in Luke 24, verse 32, did not our heart burn within us while he talked with us on the road and while he opened the scriptures to us? Listen, their hearts had grown cold, but when confronted with the reality of the resurrected savior and the truth of God's word, their hearts were set on fire again. Friend, has your heart grown cold? Listen, the Lord wants to light your heart on fire again with love and passion for him. If you've walked away, it's time to come back. If you've you've departed, it's time to return. Today is your day to come back to Jesus. The Bible goes on to tell us that that evening, the sun was going down. The day was coming to an end. And this time, Jesus appeared to his disciples who were hiding in an upper room. They still did not understand or believe. Jesus came through the door, appeared to them, showed him his hands, showed him his feet, showed him his side. When Jesus appeared to his disciples in that upper room, the Bible tells us that he provided four specific things for them. First of all, Jesus gave them peace. John chapter 20, verse 19 Jesus came, stood in the midst of them and said, peace be with you. Moment when Jesus arrived, the disciples were not at peace. They were in fear. They were in turmoil. They were broken. They were hurting. They were disillusioned with life. But Jesus came in to the scene and said, peace. Listen, are you at peace today? Do you have peace with God? Do you have peace in your life? People in this world are looking for some kind of serenity, some kind of peace. They travel down different roads to secure it. But only Jesus, who is called the Prince of Peace, can give you the peace that you desire, a peace that surpasses your understanding, that will guard your heart and mind if you'll turn to him today. The Bible tells us not only did Jesus provide peace, but he also showed them proof. It says in verse 20 of John that when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side and the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. Jesus entered the room. He showed them proof of what he had done. The proof of his love. Jesus had been beaten beyond recognition of a man. They heard the sound of the scourge coming down upon his back. They had watched the nails pierce his hands and feet. They watched Jesus die the most horrible death imaginable. They knew where the gravesite was. They knew where he was buried. However, three days after his death, Jesus rose from the dead, appeared to his disciples. And the Bible says he also appeared to over 500 witnesses that same time. Paul tells us 30 years later that Jesus was seen by over 500 witnesses, many of which were still alive. In fact, someone said, if you were to take 500 witnesses who saw Jesus alive after his death and burial, and you were to place them in a courtroom, if each of those 500 people were to testify for only six minutes, including cross-examination, you would have an amazing 50 hours of firsthand testimony. Add to this testimony many other eyewitnesses, and you would well have the largest, most lopsided trial in history. What I'm saying to you is there is proof he is alive. He's no longer dead. And listen, if you need more proof, you say, well, I wasn't there. I didn't see it. If you need more proof of the power of the resurrection of Jesus, here's what I want you to do. I want to invite you to look around. Look around in this parking lot and see thousands that are gathered here today because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. There's the proof. It's all around you. Open your eyes. Jesus provided peace. He provided proof, but he also gave them purpose. Jesus said to them, peace to you. As the Father has sent me, I also send you. These men now having seen the risen Savior had a purpose. They were to take what they had seen and take it to the world. Friend, let me ask you, what is the meaning of your life? What is the purpose for your existence? Is it simply to work nine to five, clock out, eventually retire and just exist? 
Why are you here? How can something of lasting significance be achieved? Where will you go when your life ends? So many people have never really stopped to consider these important questions. They end up looking back years later and wonder why this didn't work out or that fell apart. So many goals that they achieved and yet still the emptiness. What is your purpose for existence? Listen, God wants to give you a purpose. Your purpose is to glorify him. You were created for a purpose and a destiny and you discover it when you turn your life to Christ. That's when it becomes real. Real meaning is found in accepting Jesus as your Savior. Jesus finally gave them power. In verse 22 of John, it says, He breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. He breathed on them. They were sealed with the Spirit. They would be empowered with the Spirit. Power to live the Christian life comes from the Lord. When you realize that Jesus is alive, the Bible says the same power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead lives in us. That's power enough to live the Christian life, friend. Maybe you said, I've tried to be a Christian. I've tried. I did. I tried that once. <laughs> Whose power were you depending on? Listen, there is power, the power of the Holy Spirit that can be yours today if you'll turn to Christ. During the last 40 days leading up to Jesus' departure, there were at least five additional appearances, 10 in all. What does the resurrection of Jesus prove, folks? It proves, first of all, the exclusivity of Jesus Christ, that he is who he claimed to be, that he is God. It also proves his deity. It proves and validates his teaching. Listen, everything that Jesus said is true concerning salvation, concerning sin, concerning his return, concerning judgment, concerning heaven, and concerning hell. It's all true. You don't have to believe it, but it's still true. But the resurrection of Jesus also provides victory over the devil. The resurrection of Jesus provides victory over death. Folks, listen, death is the greatest of all mortal enemies. Every person is one day going to die. 10 out of 10 people die. It's a serious statistic that none escapes. There is a heaven and there is a hell. And Jesus came so that you would never have to experience hell, but that you could experience heaven. The devil is defeated, death is conquered, and you can be delivered from the power of sin because of the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Folks, the truth of the resurrection is firmly established, even without man's approval or acknowledgement or submission to it. What you believe concerning the resurrection will in no way affect who Jesus is, but it will affect your eternal destiny. In fact, at this very moment, if you're not a Christian, your eternal destiny is hanging in the balance. It is not enough to simply intellectually assent to a historical figure named Jesus and check off the Easter service box. You must place your faith and trust in him as your savior if you're going to be saved. That's the only way. And I believe that today there are some who may be coming to Christ for the very first time. Others of you, you're coming back to the Lord. You have wandered away and you need to come back. But you first have to realize that God loves you. That is the place to start. The Bible says, For God so loved the world that he sent his one and only begotten Son, that whosoever would believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. You are loved by God. You're listening to our Easter special here on A Daily Walk with Pastor John Randall. We hope you enjoyed the message. You can hear it again at adailywalk.org. And sign up for our free podcast so you can start receiving biblical encouragement on a regular basis. If you'd rather have a CD copy sent your way, that is available for a cost of $5. You can order by phone at 877-242-0828. Have you downloaded our free app? This is a great way to listen to weekly teachings from John. Search for Calvary South OC. It's always encouraging to hear from our listeners. Even just a brief email letting us know you're listening and where means a lot. 
It's an opportunity to say thanks to God for what he's doing. Share a praise report or a prayer request today. You can email that to us at adailywalk at gmail.com. That's adailywalk at gmail.com. We've got a new and cool t-shirt to tell you about. It's our Jesus Loves You tee. I think you'd agree that's a message people need to hear, not only at Easter, but all year long. So get the Jesus Loves You t-shirt today, just in time for Easter, by going to adailywalk.org. You can also call 877-242-0828. A Daily Walk is heard on stations like this one all across the nation, but we can't do this alone. We rely on the Lord to make this happen. And perhaps he's stirring in your heart a desire to get involved in what we're doing. People are being blessed and helped in their daily walk, and your gifts help to make that possible. Again, to make a secure donation, drop by adailywalk.org or call 877-242-0828. Wherever you may be this resurrection weekend, we hope and pray the risen Lord is exalted and praised. May God richly bless you. This is a presentation of Calvary South O.C.